Welcome to the Vector Garden. Yesterday, the new version of Affinity dropped and it's free, so probably you might want to check it out. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the image trace feature and compare it to Inkscape and Illustrator just in order to see what it can do and where to find it. I have a couple of templates in this file, so just that we can see how it works. I'm going to zoom in here and select that. And let's go to Vector Image Trace. And there we've got it. It has two sliders in order to adjust the settings. So it has the edge threshold, which does this, as you can see. And it has curve fitting, which works like this. So the curve fitting is probably the easier one to understand. The curves get smoother but less precise when you move that to the right and the opposite to the left. The edge threshold is something different. It does away with all these grayish objects, which are not true black when I move that to the right. And that is somewhat like it works in Illustrator that you might have used before, but it also does something else. And we will see that in different templates here. Let's take a look at these buttons down here. So if you turn that on, then you have a before and after slider. So you can take a look at what you have achieved. And in here, you've got them side by side. But I think this is nice because you can kind of make this a blink test to also check how precise it has become. Let's just apply this with that threshold. And I'm going to switch to Illustrator just to show you that slider. So let's go in here and take the same template and have this in black and white. And then when you move the threshold, which has the same name, what you do is just determine how dark that will be. Move it to the left and it gets less dark and to the right, it gets darker, just like that. This determines what kind of lightness it picks up in the result. Let's switch back to Affinity. As you have seen, I have clicked on OK and now we have got the result immediately. So we can move that around. And as you have also seen here, all of this is a white area. So it does not automatically eliminate the white. It just leaves it a white and you have to delete that later. As you can see here in the layers, there are curves immediately. Also in the result, you have a lot of these fringe elements. So it has automatically chosen kind of the color mode for the result and you didn't get a black and white result. So that is not possible. It does that for you automatically. Let's go to the next one. So this is the typical template for auto trace in any vector app. So kind of this hand drawn thing, not a lot of precision. And this is something they can all do pretty well. So let's go to that image trace and you see it has picked up the last settings and I'm going to get smoother curves but then the lines do not get very equal width, kind of a not so variable width. So I want to keep that and have the tolerance set to a more intolerant value. And for the edge threshold, you would need to zoom into these areas here. And you can do so by just pressing Command and plus or Control and plus on Windows in order to zoom in. You have to take care of what happens here. So that's probably what to look out for and then set up this edge threshold. You see I'm reducing it, but there's not a lot happening. So that's what's in here. And also, of course, you can take a look at these kind of details. So let's apply that. And the next thing we're going to do is take a look at sizes. Let's take a look at this and I'm going to make a copy of this and then scale it down. So let's first trace this and go to image trace. And I'm going to trace these two with the same settings and both set to a pretty high precision. So let's apply that and go here 
and do the same and like that. And now I'm going to enlarge this. And you see, depending on how large I have scaled that, it was the same image, so it has the same amount of pixels, you get a different result. So that is something to watch out for, to probably scale your template higher so you get a more precise result here. And just to show you in Illustrator, let's take a look at the same thing in Illustrator. Here we've got those two images. And again, I'm going to trace them at this setting. I'm going to reduce the number of colors and leave these at the same setting. And then let's expand that and do this with about the same settings here and then expand that. And you see when doing that, we get the same result. So Illustrator actually counts the pixels. Affinity does not. Let's go to the next one here. And this is also interesting. So gradients are kind of the end game of photo tracing. So let's go to image trace. And you see when this edge threshold is set to 0%, then you will get this gradient split up in a gazillion of pieces. But when you move that to the right, the gradient colors get united to one shape, which is of course desirable. Later, after you've got the vectors, you can apply those gradients again. And this is then pretty nice. You get a clean gradient inside of that. So that is pretty nice. And that, of course, is something the threshold slider in Illustrator does not do. So edge threshold is something more than just black and white. And it it is about how the software calculates where the edges are. We can figure this one out and probably you want that set to pretty low tolerance and then apply that. So that's nice as well. So if you want to get the same in Illustrator, then let's take a look at that as well. We've got the same template. What we can do in Illustrator, of course, is go to the high color and you see some of the gradients are actually recognized, some are not. So Illustrator can auto trace gradients in some cases, but if you want to suppress them, go to this low color preset and you can reduce those, the number of color even more until you find the sweet spot where all these colors get united. When unchecking this transparency option, you can get better results here. Let's switch back to affinity. So we've seen that the gradients get eliminated and that applies to this template here as well. So let's go to image trace and you see again we've got gradients reduce or eliminated and can apply them later. So let's apply that. And now let's get to the real end game of image tracing, which is this kind of template that you then want to have into a black and white result. And that's where we will not get to a decent solution in Affinity. Let's go to image trace. This looks quite well. So let's get more tolerance to get smoother curves and let's try with the threshold. But we have grays in the result. So what we can't get is a black and white result from this. So any kind of woodcut or something, you will always end up with that result. And the same might apply to other black and white templates that you might get anti-aliasing artifacts along the edges. Let's apply that. The same here, of course, in Illustrator. So we have that black and white preset. And then of course we need to adjust the settings. We need to set the noise to a lower value in order to catch all these small areas, get more precision into the paths and maybe adjust those corners slightly. But then we are able to get quite a decent result with this, like that perhaps. Now, if you want to stay with free software, you can use Inkscape. Inkscape has an auto trace module that you can find in here in the trace bitmap. 
It has three modes. It can do a single scan, which gives us black and white. It can do multicolor, which can give us grayscale or color images. And it can trace pixel art, like 1990s computer game look. So let's go to the single scan, which is already active. I'm going to select the image. And we have already some pretty decent presets here. So the threshold is maybe a little low because we have to watch out for this preview here. So let's make that higher. So we catch all these fine lines in there, which are pretty gray, as you can see, like that. So then we have to check out how to set up the noise. So how much detail we will pick up. And with the low setting, we can get a lot of detail. Then you can smooth the corners of that. So just zoom in and check out what you want to do with that. And then also some optimization, which is done on the paths. But I'm just going to update the preview and then apply that. So as a result, there is the original bitmap and the result, uh, the traced result on top of that. So let's move that to the side and you can see we get a pretty decent result. That's what you can do with these image trace modules and above all with the one in Affinity.